and we're rolling. So, five minutes on red flags in biomechanics. The reason that I like biomechanics, or one of the reasons I like biomechanics, is it really, really hard to kill someone or do them lasting harm, um, as opposed to diabetic wound care, in which case, of course, it's very easy to cause somebody lasting damage. You only have to make one mistake. But in biomechanics, generally speaking, we're dealing with insoles and musculoskeletal pathology, which are rarely... Um, very very dangerous but there are a few conditions that we do have to take very seriously uh, these are the red flags these are the things that if you're not confident with what you're doing you should definitely refer on um, and possibly refer on anyway uh, there are three uh, really significant ones the first is something called cordura equina syndrome um, this is a spinal problem uh, it's where the uh, the nerves that come out towards the lower end of the back, as they come out from the spine, they fan out into uh, what looks like a horse's tail, uh, hence cordura equina, uh, and those nerves join together and go down into the legs to supply the nerves. Uh, there's lots of things um, with nerve pain in the leg that you can treat. However, if you have somebody who, with or without a significant history of back pain, um, suffers what's called saddle paresthesia, that is numbness or tingling uh, around the bum hole or the, uh, the front bottom if you're a lady, um, anywhere that would be in contact with the saddle of a bike if you were to sit on it. You get that the hell out of your clinic um, because cordura equina syndrome is a surgical emergency. It needs to be treated within days, otherwise you can have permanent neurological damage. Um, so the first big red flag, personally with any kind of back pain, unless it's diagnosed, unless it's been seen by an expert in back pain, I will always refer it on. Um, but for certain, anyone who has any saddle paresthesia, get rid. Um, the second one, uh, which is much more common, uh, is something called posterior tibial tendon dysfunction. Um, this is where the posterior tibial muscle, which is one of the big supinating muscles in the foot, um, ceases to work well, um, ceases to be able to supinate the foot. Um, when that happens, it's often accompanied by pain. Um, it's classed in one of four categories. It's stage one, broadly speaking, is just pain um, around the insertion of the tip post. Uh, phase two is uh, when you get pain with some deformity, but that deformity is correctable. So the foot started to fall over, but you can get it back easily. Stage three, broadly speaking, um, is when you have um, a pain with deformity uh, and that deformity is not correctable. In other words, the foot has started to flatten, uh, but you can't bring it back. Um, and stage four is where you have non-correctable deformity with some form of dislocation or subluxation. There are variations in how people class it, but that's broadly speaking the thing. The reason that that's a clinical emergency, um, well, not a clinical emergency, but something that you is a red flag, uh, is because unlike most things we treat, it's progressive. Uh, most conditions we treat, things like plantar fasciitis, are self-limiting. Ultimately, generally speaking, there's an injury which gets better or sometimes stays the same. Um, but posterior tibial tendon dysfunction, left to its own devices, will just get worse and worse and worse. Uh, it will progress through those stages at whatever speed. Uh, and what tends to happen is once it goes to a certain point, other structures start to fail. The spring ligament fails, plantar fascia suffers. Um, so it will just continue. So if you see somebody with posterior tibial tendon dysfunction, if you are confident to treat it, do so. If you're not, refer it on. And when you do treat it, it's one of those things that generally we go in with much harder treatments uh, earlier, more aggressively. Um, the last big red flag for biomechanics is uh, Charcot foot. Um, that is usually in diabetics. Uh, and it's an uncontrolled proliferation around the mid-tarsal joint. Basically, um, the mid-tarsal joint is damaged um, and the bone just proliferates and keeps building and building and building and building. Um, the switch to tell the body to stop making new bone is broken. Um, so anytime you get particularly a diabetic um, with swelling, bony enlargement around the mid-tarsal joint um, and most particularly heat, um, two or three degrees difference between the, the affected foot and the healthy foot with the affected foot being hotter. Um, that needs to be seen by somebody. That needs to be immobilized, preferably in a, a cam walker or a cast uh, for at least a couple of years. Um, so mid-tarsal pathology with enlargement and heat, possible charcoal, refer it on.
that's five minutes.